Welcome to our Bible study beside Henson Creek. I would like to thank the Lord for His goodness. Uh, I was training Aaron in on mowing with the horses, and uh, then Archie um, got too close, and there's just a lot to watch. Like you're watching the horses, you're watching, you know, to keep stay on course, and anyway. Um, he got into the sickle bar mower and he got his foot cut, but uh, a neighbor of mine uh, accidentally mowed both like legs off of his uh, dog. And so like Archie's running around and it's it, it's uh, I mean it's a cut, but it's it's nothing like real major. No, no tendons were cut or ligaments were cut or so that's one one thing that we were really grateful for. And then Aaron mowed into a hornet's nest and then. Uh, not a small hornet's nest. Like, like <laughs> big. It was a good size hornet's nest. Yeah. And so in the moment of it, uh, he panicked and he got off the mower, left it in gear, and ran away from it. And he was calling, Titus, Titus. So I was I was back here at the barn and I heard him hollering. And in my mind, I had visions, or I shouldn't say visions, but like I was imagining him underneath the mowing machine or something or with a cut with a finger cut off or a leg cut or you know so I I was getting there as fast as I could and there the horses were standing still and the horses were not kicking or acting like they were being stung at all um, and uh, they were just standing quietly there and ordinarily in that situation you leave the mower in gear you leave the team they run off and spook and your mower can throw can be torn up to pieces. Your horses can run in the, into the barbed wire fence and get all cut up or get hurt. Or, I mean, it could have ended so horribly. Um, but thankfully, God is merciful. And when we're learning and we're making mistakes, you know, it was definitely a mistake to leave the team. You should always drive them out of the situation. But when people panic, things, things happen. But um, I'm just very grateful. We did pray before we started for God's protection. And he definitely protected the mower and definitely protected the horses. And then we went around again and we prayed. I said, Father in heaven, please um, be merciful to my horses and don't let them get stung. So they knew that spot and they were just revved up. And then we went around and I didn't get stung and I don't think they got stung either. And so, oh, when you gave the reins back to me. Titus, when you gave them the reins back to me, when we every time we go through there, they'd sprint through that area. They knew mm -hmm. exactly where the hornets were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, God is so good to us. Okay, we have been learning. Uh, this one is called Christ in Song. It has so many good songs. Um, it was uh, the copyright is 1908. It went out of print, and then they, they printed some like reprints of it. And so for people that are wanting to follow along, if you can get this one, Christ in Song, it has so many good ones. And we're going to sing number 218. Oh, the bitter pain and sorrow that a time could ever be when I proudly said to Jesus all of self and none of thee all of self and none of thee all of self and none of thee when I proudly said to Jesus all of self and none of thee. Yet he found me, I beheld him, bleeding on the accursed tree, and my wistful heart said faintly, some of self, and some of thee, some of self, and some of thee, some of self, and some of thee, and my wistful heart said faintly, Some of self and some of thee. Day by day his tender mercies 
Healing, helping, full and free, brought me lower while I whispered, Less of self and more of thee, less of self and more of thee, less of self and more of thee, brought me lower while I whispered, less of self and more of thee higher than the highest heavens deeper than the deepest sea lord thy love at last has conquered none of self and all of thee none of self and all of thee none of self and all of thee Lord, thy love at last has conquered none of self and all of thee. Okay, let's begin with prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you've kept us safe today. You've kept us from disaster today. You're so good. Please lead us in this study, and we're asking that you will send the Holy Spirit to convict us and to give us understanding. We ask also that you will bind Satan and his evil angels, that our minds could focus and this message could go where you want it to go. We ask in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. Our memory verse is... Isaiah chapter 33 and 16. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. Isaiah 33, Isaiah 33 and verse 16. He shall dwell on high, his place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him, his waters shall be sure, Isaiah thirty three sixteen. Excellent. You want to try it without the first letters? Oh, yeah. Um. He shall dwell on high, his place of defense shall be the munition, munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure, Isaiah 33, 16. Wow, excellent. I posted on my channel a photo of this down by the creek, and someone asked if this was, uh, they asked what we were doing, why, what's with the first letters, and is it scriptural? And I said, well, it, all I can tell you is that it works, paraphrasing what I said, but it works, and I've learned a lot of scripture this way. And as far as it being scriptural, you know, this method, I don't know, but I, I, think, it's, I think it's got good fruit. Do you know if it's scriptural? I wonder what they mean by that. Oh, is it correct? Is it biblically correct to do this? I think it's biblically I don't know why correct. It wouldn't be. I think it's biblically correct to learn, and I yeah, don't see anything wrong with it. Styles. Well, in God's Word, we have many, 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 many instances where we are instructed to hide His Word in our heart, hmm. and this is one of the best ways to put it in our memory, to hide it in our heart, because it gets us, it jump starts us to be able to memorize it. Mm-hmm. Good answer. <laughs> Brother Paul, do you want to try it? You don't have to. It's fine. Maybe not today. Okay, that's fine. Stephanie, you're going to do it? Okay. <laughs> he shall dwell on high. The His place of defense. Okay. Mm-hmm. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him, his water shall be sure. Isaiah thirty three sixteen. Excellent. Very good. Brother Bill, you gonna try it? <laughs> All right. Okay. Are you gonna sing it? Oh, thank you for reminding me. Bread shall be given him, his water shall be sure. Bread shall be given him, his water shall be sure. Bread shall be given, him his water shall be sure. 
Isaiah 33, 16. Okay, let me do it without the first letters. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. Isaiah 33, 16. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Exodus, chapter 18. Exodus chapter 18 and verses 1 through 7. When Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel his people, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt, then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back, and her two sons, of which the name of the one was Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien in a strange land. And the name of the other was Eliezer, for the God of my father, said he, was mine help, and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and with his wife, unto Moses into the wilderness, where he encamped at the mount of God. And he said unto Moses, I thy father-in-law Jethro am come unto thee, and thy wife, and her two sons with her. And Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, and did obeisance, and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare, and they came into the tents. Not far from where the Israelites were encamped was the home of Jethro, Moses' father-in-law. Remember how he was a priest of Midian. He had heard of all that God had done for Israel, even when they had not trusted God. Jethro brought Moses' wife and two sons to him. Let's reread Exodus chapter 18 and verse 7. And Moses went out to meet his father in law and did obeisance and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare, and they came into the tent. Hmm, they had a family reunion. Moses must have trusted his father-in-law, Jethro. Why? Because Moses had left his wife and two sons in Jethro's care. Okay, we have some review questions. The answer to this question is found in Exodus chapter 18 and verse 1. Who was Jethro? Moses' father-in-law. Yes, that is correct. Jethro's name, Raul, means excellence and friend of God. Mm, I didn't know that. Describe the meeting between Moses and Jethro. How would you describe it in your own words? Uh, mutual trust mm -hmm. and like friendship and respect. Mm, definitely. And obedience on the, the part of Moses to his father-in-law. Yes, did Moses trust his father-in-law, Jethro? Yes. Yeah. He did. I've never seen the word obeisance, I don't think. I just assume that that means obedient. It could include that. Um, obeisance would be like showing respect. So like, um, mm. you know, in Asian countries, when they greet one, you know, if a younger person greets an older person, they'll see them like this. Mm -hmm. Or when... Joseph was there in Egypt and his brothers came and they really needed, they really, really needed the corn. They needed grain. They did obeisance to Joseph. So they bowed down or they weren't necessarily worshiping Joseph, but they were showing respect, yes. Yeah. 
showing respect with your body language. We're going to learn about vegetables that have flowers. A carrot is a garden vegetable. Did you know that it will eventually flower and form seeds? It has pretty white lacy flowers on the plant. The friendship of Jethro and Moses was like a beautiful white flowering carrot plant, and the trust between them were like the seeds. Some vegetables in the garden that have flowers are peas, artichokes, cauliflower, broccoli, squash, and many others. Their flowers form seeds to grow new plants. God wanted the children of Israel to be beautiful in their character, like a garden flower is beautiful, and also to scatter their seeds of righteousness in the earth, that praise to God might spring up in the hearts of many people. As you work together as a family, or as a couple, plant seeds in the garden, or a weed. Discuss the seeds of trust. When you show trust in someone, they respond by trusting you. What an opportunity to point them to a trustworthy God. Let's observe flowers and learn to identify them. You could serve vegetable flowers tomorrow, such as broccoli or cauliflower. And as you are eating flowers, or you could eat violet flowers, or we ate some uh, morning glory flowers today. They were delicious. We put them in the salad. All kinds of different flowers. As you are eating flowers, Discuss the Bible lesson. In his Sermon on the Mount, Christ taught his disciples precious lessons in regard to the necessity of trusting in God. These lessons were designed to encourage the children of Israel through all ages. And they have come down to our time full of instruction and comfort. The Savior pointed his followers to the birds of the air as they warbled their carols of praise, unencumbered with the thought of care, for they sow not, neither do they reap. And yet the great Father provides for their needs. The Savior asks, Are ye not much better than they? Matthew 6, verse 26. The great provider for man and beast opens his hand and supplies all his creatures. The birds of the air are not beneath his notice. He does not drop the food into their bills, but he makes provision for their needs. They must gather the grains he has scattered for them. They must prepare the material for their little nests. They must feed their young. They go forth singing to their labor. For your heavenly Father feedeth them. And are ye not much better than they? Are not you, as intelligent spiritual worshipers, of more value than the birds of the air? Will not the author of our being, the preserver of our life, the one who formed us in his own divine image, provide for our necessities if we but trust in him? Christ pointed his disciples to the flowers of the field, growing in rich profusion and glowing in the simple beauty which the Heavenly Father had given them as an expression of his love to man. He said, Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. The beauty and simplicity of these natural flowers far outrival 
the splendor of Solomon. The most gorgeous attire produced by the skill of art cannot bear comparison with the natural grace and radiant beauty of the flowers of God's creation. Jesus asks, If God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Matthew six, twenty-eight and 30. If God, the divine artist, gives to the simple flowers that perish in a day their delicate and varied colors, how much greater care will he have for those who are created in his own image? This lesson of Christ's is a rebuke to the anxious thought, the perplexity and doubt of the faithless heart. Many times I have doubted my Heavenly Father's ability or willingness to care and provide for my needs. Many times. In fact, um, I was worrying about this hay crop and thinking, oh no, like, what if the baler breaks down? Uh, see, I, I had an Amish neighbor, Noah Schlebaugh, and if I had trouble with the baler, I could, I could say, hey Noah, would you please help me? I don't know what to do with the baler. And he would come, and he was like a grandpa to me, and he would show me what to do, and he would help me, and I'm just not mechanically inclined. And then this year, he moved away, and I thought, oh no, like if the baler messes up, I, I just, I don't know how to do it, and uh, I don't know, what am I going to do? And, uh, and, and I was just feeling stressed and overwhelmed, and I, I just thought, oh no, you know, and maybe it's going to rain on the hay, and, and then, you know, ruin the hay crop, and, uh, and, and I was just worrying about it, and um, then it bailed so nicely, and then... Uh, one of the strings broke and I didn't know how to thread it in the needle and get it to tie again. And so I asked Brother Bill, I said, hey, Bill, would you help me? He's like, oh, yeah, sure, no problem. So he uh, uh, re-threaded it and it was tying again really well. And we put up we put up enough hay that I don't need to cut any more hay the, the rest of this year. I've got plenty in the barn. And I just worried and worried and stressed and stressed and stressed. And what I should have done is I should have said, Father in heaven, I know that you provide the birds with their food. And you don't just drop the seeds into their mouth, but you do make sure that they have plenty of seeds to choose from. And I should have said, Father in heaven, thank you for how you provided people to help me in the past. And though they have moved away, you can bring other people. And... Uh, when I told Noah Schleybach, I said, what am I going to do, Noah? I, I, I just, when you move away, I won't have my mechanic right there and, and I won't have you to help me. What am I going to do? And he said, well, the Lord will give you another paddle. So last year when he said that, I didn't have all these volunteers. But now Bill is a paddle, Aaron's a paddle, Paul is a paddle, and so I have more paddles. And may God forgive me for the times when I have distrusted or worried that I would not have what I need. I should have remembered that these horses are involved in sharing the gospel. They take us to go out on Sabbath to go by the stream or they're here to teach children lessons they need to learn. These horses are part of sharing the gospel and would not our Heavenly Father continue to provide for them and provide the hay they need as He has in the past? Yes, He will. Yes. Any other thoughts the Holy Spirit may put on your heart to share before we close. I'm just really thankful that today didn't go any worse. Archie could have been maimed and mm -hmm. he could have been killed. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, I could have been stung by more than one hornet. That's where you, you stung once? Or? Yeah, I've never been stung by a hornet until mm-hmm. the day. I just got mm-hmm. one sting. And obviously your horses could have been hurt and mm-hmm. your, your mower could have been destroyed and mm-hmm. so many things could have happened. But mm-hmm. um, And um, I just appreciate your patience and forgiveness. <laughs> yeah, in the moment, it, it, I, it was a bit... You know, I, I was afraid. The horses did stop, but I shouldn't have left them. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, they spooked and ran, and then, mm-hmm. then we all stopped, and then, then mm-hmm. I, I left them for a little bit. But, yeah. Well, it could have been bad. <laughs> I, I, you know, I definitely need to extend the same mercy that has been extended to me. I was plowing with Eli Yoder's horses in his plow, and I let them turn too sharp, and then the plow flipped over. And then they spooked and I couldn't get a hold of the lines in time. And they ran off with that plow and they just pretty much destroyed the plow. I said, Eli, uh, let me pay for that. You know, that was my fault. He's like, no, you're not paying for it. I'll, I'll pay for it. Another time I was raking hay for Isaac Cope, one of the old order Mennonites. And we were raking hay and then there was a little bit that the rake couldn't really get. And so I got off the rake and I was getting some hay that the rake couldn't quite reach. But I made the mistake, like you made the mistake of not putting it out of gear. I didn't put the hay rake out of gear. That was my mistake. And so then they started off and something spooked them and they ran across that field just like, uh, it was like lightning or like bats flying out of a hay hole. I mean, they were coming out and just flying through that field. So Isaac Cope was up on the hill, and he could see them down in the in the little valley there. And so he ran out on the road, and he met them at the bridge, and he caught one of them by the bridle, and he was holding on tight, and it dislocated his shoulder. And so then uh, and it, it really damaged his hay rake. And I was working for $20 a day on his farm because um, I really wanted to learn the, like the skills of farming with horses. And so I told him, Isaac, it's my fault. I said, just don't pay me, uh, uh, you know, like, you know, just don't pay me for this week because, you know, I, I, that, I shouldn't have done that. Isaac said, no, I, I'm, you know, people make mistakes. There's been so much mercy extended to me when I was learning and this was not nearly as bad as some of the mistakes that I've made. I mean, I mean, it was a bad, it was a bad mistake, yeah. but nothing. There were no repercussions for this mistake, like some of the re- repercussions were for for me when I was in your shoes, learning on the learning curve. Yeah, you prayed over it before it happened, and I think that helped because nothing was broken, nothing really went bad. Even mm-hmm. Archie's. But mm-hmm. we'll probably be fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I mean, one out of that huge hornet's nest to only get stung one time is very amazing. I ran up there and got jumped on there and tried to get out of Dodge as fast as I could. Mm-hmm. And I got stung once here and once here. But, st- I mean, it could have been way worse. I could have been stung 10 or 10 or 20 times, you know. Yeah. yeah. And it didn't really swell up that much either. It hurt. It it burns like fire at first, and then pretty soon it's gone. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised you heard him. Yeah. Ah, he yeah he was yelling. I didn't know what to do. I was like, "Mm." I was at the barn, and Aaron was upstream in a field, a neighbor's field, and pretty pretty long distance. But there is a pretty good echo in, in this valley here. Um, sometimes I'll wake up at two o'clock in the morning and go out and sing. And I like to sing out there close to the barn because there's a real the acoustics is really good and the sound will come back. It's yeah. probably three quarter mile from here, straight line. Yeah. yeah. A true story. On a cold day in winter, a lad stood at the outside door of a cottage in Scotland. The snow had been falling very fast. And the poor boy looked very cold and hungry. Mayn't I stay, ma'am? He said to the woman who had opened the door. I'll work, cut wood, go for water, and do all your errands. You may come in at any rate, 
until my husband comes home, said the woman. There, sit down by the fire. You look perishing with the cold. And she drew a chair to the warmest corner. Then, suspiciously glancing at the boy, from the corners of her eyes, she continued setting the table for supper. Presently came the tramp of heavy boots. The door swung open with a quick jerk, and the husband entered, wearied with his day's work. A look of intelligence passed between his wife and himself. He had looked at the boy, but did not seem very well pleased. He nevertheless made him come to the table, and was glad to see how heartily he ate his supper. Day after day passed, and yet the boy begged to be kept until tomorrow. So the good couple, after due consideration, concluded that so long as he was such a good boy, and worked so willingly, they would keep him. One day, in the middle of the winter, a peddler, who often traded at the cottage, called, and after disposing of some of his goods, was preparing to go, when he said to the woman, You have a boy out there splitting wood, I see, pointing to the yard. Yes, do you know him? I have seen him, replied the peddler. Where? Who is he? What is he? A jailbird. And the peddler swung his pack over his shoulder. That boy, young as he looks, I saw in court myself, and heard him sentenced ten months. You do well to look carefully after him. Ooh, there was something so dreadful in the word jail. The poor woman trembled as she laid away the things she had bought of the peddler. Nor could she be easy till she called the boy in and told him, that she knew the dark past of his history. Ashamed and distressed, the boy hung down his head. His cheeks seemed bursting with hot blood, and his lips quivered. Well, he muttered, his frame shaking, there's no use in my trying to do better. Everybody hates and despises me. Nobody cares about me or trusts me. Tell me, said the woman, how came you to go, so young, to that dreadful place? Where is your mother? Oh, exclaimed the boy with a burst of grief that was terrible to behold. Oh, I hadn't no mother, ever since I was a baby. If I'd only had a mother, he continued, while tears gushed from his eyes, I wouldn't have been chased and kicked, and cuffed, and horsewhipped. I wouldn't have been saucy, and got kicked down, and ran away, and then stole because I was hungry. Oh, if only I had a mother. The strength was all gone from the poor boy, and he sank on his knees, sobbing great choking sobs, and rubbing the hot tears away with the sleeve of his jacket. The woman was a mother, and though all her children slept under the cold sod in the churchyard, she was a mother still. She put her hand kindly on the head of the boy, and told him to look up, and said from that time that he should find in her a mother. Yes, she even put her arms around the neck of that forsaken, deserted child. She poured from her mother's heart sweet kind words, words of counsel and of tenderness. Oh, how sweet was her sleep that night, how soft her pillow. She had plucked some thorns from the path of a little sinning but striving mortal. That poor boy became a trustworthy man. The poor outcast became that mother's support. Nobly did he repay the trust reposed on him. Psalm chapter 27 and verse 10 says, When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord 
will take me up. Hmm. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this woman who was kind to a young man that she didn't know. Thank you, Father, that in you there is power to change. There is transforming power that comes only from you. Father, work in our lives. Give us the transformation that we need. We thank you and we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen.